Welcome to the webinar. Uh, if you're watching the recorded version, it was held live on Wednesday, November the 1st at uh, 12.30 in the afternoon. So this is a webinar we do every week with Aondo, and um, there are two parts to it. One part is um, our, our look out for the markets, so looking at the major stuff, uh, euro, pound, gold, oil, uh, the indices, all of that. Then halfway through, We'll take a bit of a break and look at some strategy. And this week, we're going to talk about using the uh, the slow stochastic indicator. I should put the uh, the risk warning up just while I'm babbling away. Um, it's an interesting week this week. I mean, last week was pretty busy because we had uh, UK economic data, uh, ECB decision, European Central Bank last Thursday, reigning in the stimulus, lots of pressure on the euro. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, and then US GDP came out on Friday. But this week already, we've had an interest rate decision from the Bank of Japan. Tonight, we've got, I think it's at six o'clock tonight, we've got the US interest rate decision. No changes expected, I think. But as usual, it's what gets said around it that can cause the volatility. Tomorrow, we've got the Bank of England decision at lunchtime. Uh, widely expected to raise interest rates by a quarter of 1%. So really undoing the interest rate cut they did after the Brexit vote last summer, but it's quite symbolic. It'd be the first time the Bank of England's raised rates for more than a decade. Uh, and then on Friday, as if all that wasn't enough, on Friday, it's, it's a non-farm payrolls. So it's the US unemployment numbers on Friday, which will be 12.30 on Friday, won't it? Because they haven't put their clocks back, whereas we have. So it's a, it's a really, really busy week. So um, there you go. Let's see. Let's see if we can make some sense of it. So uh, what are we looking at? Right. So what we're looking at here, this is um, Aondo's trading platform. This is Trade Hub. So let's just maximize that. So Aondo may be better known for uh, follow trading, copy trading, that sort of stuff. But you can, of course, do self-directed trading as well. And I thought we might as well start off with this miserable market, the Dow Jones, yet again. Uh, in pre-market trade, U.S. markets, U.S. stock markets out to fresh all-time highs. So um, this is the Dow. I think the Dow closed yesterday, 23,377. So it's currently trading up uh, about 130 points from from last night's close. And I think, as I say every week, you can't bet against this trend at the moment. You know, we see the the odd wiggle for US stock markets. And we had one just a couple of days ago. You can you can just about make it out here. Here we go with it. The Dow actually went down for a day. Um, but any weakness, almost any sniff of weakness, and the buyers just pile back in. And here we are. We're at 23,500 on the Dow. Let's just remind ourselves, you know, where we've come from as usual. So it was the, um, it's all stopped. The latest leg started after the US election last year, the presidential election. We had that spiky move overnight when it looked like uh, Donald Trump was going to get in. Everyone expected the market to sell off, but that was really the last bit of major weakness we had, you know, the market. So since then, we've gone from 18.4 to 23.5. So we've moved uh, 5,000 points. So what's that? 25% in a, a little under a year for US markets. Absolutely cracking and um, just show no signs at the moment, at least, of, of any weakness. You know, like I say, if we, if we flip this and look at the uh, look at the intraday charts, look at the hourlies, I mean, you, you get sell-offs, but, you know, they struggle to last for more than a couple of days. And and the thing is, you know, there'll be plenty of people trying to call the top. I do this every week and I keep forgetting to check it. So let's have a look because there are brokers out there who let you see which way clients are positioned. And as usual, this is not going to be rocket science to guess that most people are betting uh, the market it's going to go down. So let's have a look. Having a look at A and other broker. So 71% of their clients are short. You know, you see this in markets that are runaway markets like this. Everyone thinks it can't go on and the market just squeezes higher. So, um, you know, if we did get a half decent sell off, I mean, there are there are a couple of catalysts, you know, over the next the next two days. There's the there's the Fed decision this evening. Maybe there'll be a shock in there. There's the, the payrolls on Friday. You know, maybe there'll be a shock in there, but we had bad payrolls last month because of the, the storms. So I think it's something like 250,000 jobs are expected to be added. Let's just have a look at some levels that that would need to be cracked to even start to hint of a of a deeper sell-off for these U.S. stock markets. So if we if we pick up on if we pick up on this, maybe this trend, something like that. You know, I think I think it's only if at the very first in the very first level, if we start to lose. Yeah, maybe the lows from last week. So 23,250 on the Dow, 
200-ish, that sort of zone. And maybe we can see a deeper pullback. But back here, we've got pretty solid support at 23,000. You know, So I think we need to see something probably in excess of a 500-point de decline on the Dow for it to even start looking moderately negative uh, for the weeks ahead. Um, it finished positive in October. That was the, the seventh month on the trot that we've had uh, the Dow finishing positive. If it finishes positive in November, it's the longest winning monthly streak since 1995. So that does, I think, put into some perspective just uh, you know how strong these US markets have been. And clearly, you know, they've dragged most of the rest of the world higher. You know, that's 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 our uh, that's our Dow market. Uh, if you look at the S&P, if a quick look at the S&P, then we'll look at the European indices. Then we'll look at something a bit more interesting. You know, the S&P. There, there's the S&P on the hourlies overnight, pushing out, uh, pushing out again to fresh all-time highs. It's interesting. Again, I know I, I bang on about this every week, but the importance of big levels. You know, we talk about things like stochastics and MACDs and RSIs and all that sort of uh, cobblers, um, but you, you can't be looking looking out for big levels in the market. And look at the the sell-off October the 25th sell-off. Where it where it stops, you know, it stopped uh, from the lows from October the 19th in the out of hours session. So 25.44 was a big level from the S&P. It dropped for from uh, nearly 25.80 down to that 44 level. The buyers came back in, and um, you know, off we go again. So uh, you know, it's the same thing every week for these U.S. markets. Incredible strength. There's the big level for the S&P 25.40. We're currently at, at 85. So again, you know, a 45 point decline in the S&P is about 500 points on the Dow. Uh, and we could see maybe a, a deeper sell off than, than we have been seeing. But um, for now, you know, it's the dangerous markets, I think, to try and bet against because they just they just snap higher on um, on almost no news as well. It feels like, you know, nothing, just any any odd excuse to push the markets higher. Let's have a look at the DAX, uh, German 30. Look at that. Someone's put a rocket under that. Um, today, so so where were we a week ago? So a week ago we were we were here probably when we were doing the webinar, weren't we? About about thirteen thousand. So we're currently just shy of thirteen and a half thousand uh, on the DAX. So again, a you know a pretty chunky move. What's that? Is, is that like a four percent move? Is it four? Or am I being stupid there? One hundred thirty. It's not far off, I suppose, is it? Three percent move, something like that. Just over the last week uh, on the DAX again. So German markets out to fresh all-time highs there, there's the dailies you know that really is a heck of a rally since the summer you know the market's moved um what 1500 points so about eight percent since august uh the german market again you know we, we've got support levels left back here a little fiddly support around about 12.9 which coincides with the with the the previous uh all-time highs in june before it really sort of sold off quite heavily um, so that that's one level to watch on the DAX. But as long as these uh, these US markets continue to go up, um, you'd expect everything else to get dragged up with it. Let's see what the FTSE is doing, because the FTSE has been a little bit lackluster uh, of late. And we've got that big, there we go, still, 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 still. It's interesting. Um, so on the FTSE, the FTSE is the underperformer at the moment. And, and the FTSE 100 is, is always, um, you know, a, a bit of an odd one because it's not particularly representative at all of the UK economy. Uh, so many of, of the companies that make up the FTSE 100 derive their earnings from overseas. Um, we've had a bit of a stronger pound over the last few days. Uh, so a, a stronger pound tends to weigh on the, the FTSE 100. But the FTSE is uh, you know, still capped by those, those highs from up here, just ahead of 7,600. So the all-time highs uh, from June. But again, if we see the uh, U.S. markets continuing to uh, to power higher, you know we'd expect to see the FTSE finally get dragged up and crack those levels. Um, so let's have a look at the FTSE 250. I mean the 250 is is usually more uh, representative of what's going on uh, in the market. I think I've just managed to break my charts there actually by doing that. It's because uh, I'm trying to break up the future. Oh, let's skip it. It's not going to come up. Um, so for stock markets, it's the same old, same old. You know, stock markets continuing to push higher, being dragged up by the uh, the U.S. markets. That's it. Same old story. Everyone's buying the dips. Currencies are a bit more interesting. I thought it was interesting what we saw last week uh, for the euro, and I think 
plenty of people, me included, you know, if you were watching what the price was doing, you'd have been wrong footed by what was going on with the euro uh, last week. Because we had that, we had the, the, the central bank, the, the interest rate decision on Thursday last week. And it looked sort of moderately strong going into it. This is euro dollar on an hourly chart. So um, we were sort of pushing up into it. So this was this was Wednesday. So we're breaking out through the previous day's highs. It'd been a pretty low volatile couple of days. The market was pushing up. This was Thursday morning. So it starts selling off a bit on Thursday morning. But you'd think, OK, it's just a bit of a retracement. Then uh, the interest rate decision comes out. No change. But they do say, well, we're going to rein in the stimulus. You know, we've seen plenty of stimulus from central banks over the past few years, you know, with the QE and the bond buying, all that stuff. Um, so no real surprises, but the market reaction, look at the reaction. You know, the market was trading around about the 118 level. And, and by Friday, it, was, it, just, it just carried on from Thursday lunchtime right to the close of the European session on Friday. And it was only really after then, after about sort of five o'clock, we did see something of a, of a relief rally for the euro. But it pushed as low as 1570-ish was the level. So we saw a good 200 odd point decline for euro dollar after that. And, and the reason it's interesting is, I think, because of what's gone on with euro dollar uh, over the last six months. So, so we're just back on a daily chart now. And I think if we um, if we pick up on let's pick up on a on the trend. So this, you know, this it's been interesting. The market euro dollar has rallied so much. Uh, we've gone from 106 up to 121. So a 15 percent move in uh, not even six months. It's a big move for a currency. And I've talked a bit. I'm not a big fan of patterns, but I've talked a bit about maybe that's a head, no, shoulder, head, shoulder. And then maybe in the bigger picture, shoulder, head, shoulder. And if it is, then, then it broke on Friday with that breakthrough. Um, the lows one. The, what, was, what was the low? Let me let me just pick this up now because it was a big level that broke on Friday really sort of through those old lows, 116.60 lows, and it done a pretty good job of holding the market up. And I think it's interesting what happens next. You know, it, it, it was under pressure from the European Central Bank decision and just, just really sailed lower for a day and a half. And we had seen something of a pullback this week. I think if it takes out these lows, it's the big level to watch, 115.70. I think if it takes out these lows, it does actually look that finally that this trend is over and we have to start looking at much uh, more aggressive targets on the downside. You know, maybe back down to here, that back down to 113 uh, from um, from June. So I think it's um, it's a really important level to watch. I think this one, this old lows. Let's just flip it over to an hourly and see. You can see it's been again, it's been a little bit, a little bit subdued this week. That was the move to the lows on, on Friday. Something of a rally um, on Monday, um, but yesterday it couldn't get back through those old highs. Today it couldn't get back through those old highs. So even though we've seen a bounce back, it has remained under some pressure. So um, I think if you're around at six o'clock tonight, just to see how it reacts to this US interest rate decision. Uh, I think if it goes through 115.70, it's a, it does sort of confirm the break and it's the start, arguably, of, of a new trend, a new trend lower for euro dollar so 115.70 the big level to watch i think the other short-term level to watch are the highs for this week around about 116.60 so i think those those are the ones to watch uh going into going into this afternoon let's plonk some plonk some squiggles on we're going to talk about the slow stochastics in a minute but for now let's just, let's just plonk these on and see what they're telling us hang on a second where are we down here got all the way down here so if we put on uh let's just change them to the the textbook settings of five, three, three. There we go. So um, I'll talk about if you're not familiar with these things, I'll talk about what they mean in a couple of minutes time. But we have had we have had and it's maybe not surprising because the market has been under so much pressure. We have had a, a sort of a, a half decent buy signal uh, day before yesterday off the slow stochastics. Um, the last time we had a sort of decent buy signal like this was back here, which wasn't that brilliant, actually. And then we've probably got to go back to when it was so oversold, sort of back down to here. So let, let, let's see what happens. But I think we've got, we could get a bit of a resolution to, to which way next for euro dollar uh, over the next 24 hours or so. So 115.70, 116.60, I think are the levels to watch. Now, interestingly, I mean, the, the, the pound, you know, big day for the pound tomorrow because we've got this um, interest rate decision from the Bank of England. Um, 
I think I think I mean I think the expectation is for a quarter of a percent rise uh, from the bank. So you could say, well, is it is it priced in, or will it just see it as a relief that that it did, does happen as expected? So I think it, it it can always be a bit of a coin flip on these sort of decisions. You know, classically, a central bank raising interest rates is good for the currency, um, but everyone's expecting them to raise rates so is it already in the price let's just let's just take ourselves out and, and remind ourselves you know where we are for the pound the, the recovery that started uh, sort of this time last year for pound us dollar is still going and we'll look at euro sterling as well actually you know we're well within that trend we could we could weather all sorts of sell offs from here and that trend would still be valid but i think this the short term again is maybe what's interesting considering we've got the US tonight and the uh, what's it tomorrow, the Bank of England tomorrow and the payrolls on Friday. You know, you can see we've um, we're sort of stuck in something of a tight range. So on the top side, sort of 133.40 is capping the pound. On the downside, I think 130.20 is a level. So let's say, you know, 130 to 133.40, I think are the big levels to watch. So if you thought, you know, arguably, if you thought, well, actually the bounce back on the pound, let's go over to the short term, the bounce back on the pound has gone far enough now. You know, we've we've come about 300 or so points off these lows from the end of last week. You know, you've got an obvious le reference level to go short. You know, we have these old 133.40 highs from the middle of October where the market ran out of steam and turned down. Uh, I think if, if we can break, if it does break 133.40, I think it does suggest that this correction from the, from the sort of 136.50 highs is over and the target would be, a run back to these highs, you know, run back to 136, 137. And the trend for this year definitely favours that. You know, if you were, for me, if I was betting on where's the mark, where's this market going to be uh, medium term, you know, would it be betting for it to have a look at these highs uh, up here again? So I think it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what happens when we get all these, these announcements out. We could well have a quiet afternoon. You know, we've got, we've got this interest rate decision tonight in the US, you know, so typically it wouldn't be surprising to see, you know, something of a quiet market ahead of that. Uh, and then tomorrow, the Bank of England. So um, we'll see, plenty to keep an eye on, I think the next couple of days. But let's have a little break. Um, we'll come back and we'll, we'll take a look at Euro sterling when we come back, because that's been interesting. You can see a 90 day low today, the Euro against the pound. So we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at gold and we'll take a look um, at the price of oil. I think gold, I mean, oil has been really strong. Uh, so that's interesting. But gold's an interesting one as well. And there might be an opportunity here. But let's, let's just do our little bit of theoretical shenanigans. So I just need to um, switch my screens over and do some scribbling. So let me let me see if I can if I can actually do this right for a change and make it relatively smooth. So if I flip my screen over, uh, it's not going to work. Hang on a second. No. All right. Bear with me. OK, so there's that. And then if I bring up a little piece of paper, here we go. So slow stochastics, let's talk about slow stochastics. So if you've been on these webinars for a while, you know I'm not a massive fan of having a million different indicators because I think if people are looking at lots of different indicators, they end up ignoring what the price is doing. But if you maybe only want to use one or two, I think slow stochastic is, is an interesting one to use because if we have, let's say we have our market that is doing something like that. And then what the slow stochastic is, it's made up of two lines. I think I think maybe the way to think of it is almost like an RSI, so a relative strength index showing where the market is overbought or oversold. But what you have with a slow stochastic is you have a, like a smoothing mechanism to it. So for those of you who are familiar with uh, moving averages, so you have one line, which is basically sort of plotting, you know, how overbought or how uh, oversold the market is looking so look you know typically we'll follow the overall direction of the market and then you have a second line the percentage dn line which uh sort of is a lagging version of that first line okay so there are if i just do the do the maths a bit quickly if i can remember you have a thing called percentage k so percentage k uh textbook settings are five or 10 for percentage K. And this is the bit that works out, okay, how overbought is the market compared to where it has been recently, either five days or 10 days in this example. Then the first line you see is this thing called percentage D. 
So percentage D is, is, is typically three if it's with five or six if it's with 10. And it's a three day moving average of that or it's a six day moving average of that. And then the second line, so that's the red line here. Percentage D is that line there. And then we have this thing called percentage DN, which also has a value of three, typically on a five day stochastic or six on a 10 day stochastic. And percentage DN is, wait for it, a three day moving average of the three day moving average. So this is the bit that does the raw calculation but these are the two lines that are shown and they're basically moving averages of that and then a moving average of the moving average okay so far so clear hopefully so um so you get the signal so unlike with the rsi you don't get the signal when it just moves to an extreme when it moves to overbought or oversold like moving averages you get a signal when there's a crossover so when the two lines cross over down here is a buy signal up here is a sell signal Okay, so that's um, that's how the stochastic works. And you have this idea of divergence as well. We've talked about divergence in the past, but, you know, where if a market is, is making new lows for a down move and maybe the stochastics are making higher lows, that's divergence, that's bullish divergence. So it can be a suggestion that maybe the trend is running out of steam. Okay, that is enough theory and squiggles. Let's take a look at uh, the real markets. Here we go. So, um, so for example, let, I mean, let's stick on the pound for now. Let's see. Let me just zoom in a bit just, just to walk through maybe the principle of stochastic. So the most recent sort of decent sell signal we had when it was pretty overbought would have been up here. That, that was that is a pretty good example. I mean, that, that nailed the top. See the stochastics rolling over. Buy signal down here. That did actually nail the bottom. Buy signal here. That wasn't very good. Sell signal eventually here worked. But you can see how scrappy it got in here. Okay, it didn't work too brilliantly there. Uh, buy signal there, and this is divergence actually, it's a good example. So the market slips to a low, stochastics oversold, slips a bit lower, stochastics are making higher lows. So this is bullish divergence. So I think it's much easier to spot in hindsight than it was in the real world. There's maybe a clearer example here. The market moves to a low, moves a bit lower still, stochastics are making higher lows. So that's that's how they're used. So so I've got 533 three here. If I change them, if I change it to 1066, so it's a basic, not 210. It's basically a 10 day stochastic. So I'll have fewer signals. I'll have less less volatility on the old stochastics. So here we go. So there's a 10 day stochastic. So a buy signal down here. Sell signal. Here we go. We, we found the holy grail for trading pound against the dollar. It's a 10 day stochastic. Buy signal there. Sell signal there. Uh, again, a bit messy sell signal. That's a rubbish sell signal there. Uh, sell signal there. And a bit of a buy. Buy signal uh, up there. OK, so that's um, using them both uh, same way. So 10 day, you'll get fewer signals, but in theory, they should be a bit more reliable. But you might end up getting into the move a little bit later. Uh, five day stochastic, you get, you'll get maybe more false signals, but gives you maybe maybe it's closer to the price. So it should give you more turning points. So there we go. So with the currencies, I think we've got you know, we've got these big levels to watch. 133.40 to 130 on the pound, 115.70 to 116.60 on the euro. Let's have a quick look at euro sterling uh, and then we'll uh, we'll have a look at the commodities. Look at this, look at this one. So there was lots of um, talk, you know, back in the summer, was the euro going to hit parity again with, well, not, not again, hit parity with the pounds uh, where one euro was worth one pound. And if you were buying your currency at the airport, you know, you, you may be lucky to get that. But just going back in time, you know, it's, it's a massive barrier back from 2008. So, you know, just in the sort of the, the depth of the financial crisis, we did see the euro get as high as 98 to the pounds. Um, but this whole 94 to 98 area was a problem, you know, for, for a whole year. And it does look to be in the case again. You know, we, we've pushed the euro managed to push as high as almost 93, but it's backed off. Let's let's flip it over to the dailies. I don't think it necessarily means that's the last bit of euro strength we've seen. I mean, it's interesting. It's I think I put this on Twitter yesterday. It's interesting. It's breaking below these lows. We do have there's a lot of a lot of euro dollar, not euro dollar, euro sterling support, sort of 86.50 through to here 87.20. So you know it is weak. It's a market that's making a 90-day low. So it is. It's definitely weak. Um, but if it's going to turn around anywhere, we get into the place where 
we could expect this to turn around, you know. So um, maybe the Bank of England will be the catalyst for that tomorrow. Who knows? But I think, again, really obvious area to watch for for uh, euro sterling. I think if, if we lose that 86.50 level, you know, it, it doesn't look ridiculous for us to go back to the lows of the year, you know, around about, I don't know, 83.50 down that sort of area. So I think, I think it's, you know, there's, it's been a bit of an odd week for currencies the last the last week or two. But I think we've got some real obvious levels, not a million miles away from these markets at the moment, just to keep an eye on. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's see what happens. Right, let's do, um, we'll do oil, then we'll do gold. Oil, 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 what we're looking at. US crude oil. Um, finally, it's back back to where it started the year. Um, you know, that, that rally we, we, we've seen, um, for much of this year, the price of oil under a bit of pressure, not loads of pressure, but but a little bit, you know, and we've been sort of trapped in that downtrendy thing that had been in place since the highs right at the beginning of the year, the $56 a barrel highs, and the market had just sort of zigzagged its way lower, lower highs, lower lows, uh, trading almost down as low as $42 a barrel. But since then, it's turned it around. You know, we've seen, we've seen these levels broken, a bit of a pullback, Perfectly sensible pullback. Let's just plonk that trend on there. Uh, so this is our this is our new trend in oil. You know, nice little pullback there, and we're back up to it. And, I th- and now I think it's going to be interesting again. You know, we, we are back up to levels where um, it really turned around this year. You know, it, it it had a really strong second half of last year, and this and it really ran out of steam up at 56. You know, it's currently trading just below $55 a barrel. So what happens next? For all, I think I was saying at the beginning of the year, I thought we'd see $65 a barrel for oil this year. I suppose we've still got two months uh, for that to happen. But uh, $56 is, gonna, is a really big area to watch. So again, if you weren't completely convinced by the strength in oil, it's a it's a good area to go short up here. Personally, I wouldn't. You know, I'd be looking, I'd be looking for a sell-off again, see if we get a sell-off uh, and wait for the buyers to come back in. You know, we've got, we've got lots of lots of pockets of support here. Let's let's flip it over to an hourly and we maybe see these a bit closer, a bit clearer. But um, so lots of little fiddly support levels left. You know, immediate one, maybe $53.50. Quite big, I mean, lots of support actually down here all the way from $50.40 through to 52. You know, so um, it any weakness in oil at the moment definitely favours, I think, the buyers. Uh, sort of jumping on and, and and targeting that $56 a barrel level rather than thinking it's going to top out. You know, I mean, it's interesting up here anyway because historically it has been such a big problem. Um, but I think I don't think this trend's over just yet. Famous last words. Uh, and, and today is the highest we see in three years. But um, I think that that trend down here is still going. Um, and finally, gold. I think gold, actually, should we, let's, do, let's do Bitcoin before we do gold. Let's do the, the, the comedy market that is Bitcoin. I shouldn't say that because I mean it is up it's 500% over the last year bitcoin yet again today here we go bitcoin hits fresh all time highs today I, I think I said a few a few weeks ago I bought, I finally bought in so that was going to be the top and I bought some more again yesterday so I am doing my best to try and get the top in for bitcoin but it's in it's yeah I think it is a market probably more than any other that really is just driven by by sentiment um you know, where higher prices just bring in more buyers. And I, I'm sure people can sit there and rationalize why Bitcoin should be 25,000 to the dollar. Or I think I think um, two weeks ago, someone was saying a million of Bitcoin would be worth a million in the next um, 20 years or something. And it does all feel, it definitely feels like, uh, you know, NASDAQ late 90s, early 2000s, where, oh, this market's going to go up forever. You can't lose, blah, 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 blah. You know, so it does feel quite bubbly, but that doesn't mean that it can't go a lot higher than where it is now. And what seems to work, you know, pretty well, not surprisingly, it, it, the breakouts, you know, we, we had the high in the summer, uh, wherever it was, 49.27, uh, 4,927, breaks out, off it goes, as a little squibble, breaks out, off it goes. And again, we've had a breakout again uh, this week. But I think the thing is, you know, if you're going to trade it, the moves against it they don't look that big here but you know a sell-off can move like 15 percent you know where the market goes from about six thousand almost all the way back to five thousand you know you get real chunky sell-offs it really does take volatility to a whole new level so um i think as i said last time i haven't remortgaged my house and piled into a bitcoin cfd you know i think for me it's just just 
trade it small and maybe add to the breakouts and um, see what happens. I think, you know, I think one day there is going to be a massive correction, but maybe that day is a week on Monday. Maybe that day is uh, 15 years time. Who knows? But uh, I think it's a, you know, it's an entertaining market. I think just, just yesterday, I think the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so the uh, the futures exchange uh, that that where S and P futures trade, announced that in I think in a couple of weeks or a couple of months they're going to launch a Bitcoin future. So um, maybe maybe that maybe that will signify sort of peak cryptocurrency. We'll see. But the price of Bitcoin is still going up. Something a bit more traditional. Let's take a look at the price of gold. I think gold is interesting because um, I think as I've been saying, you know, I, I still still think that the bias for gold is to go up. You know, we've had we've had years, we had had years of a falling price in gold from the 2011 highs. You know, we'd had gold. This is a weekly chart we're looking at. So gold just grinding its way lower. But um, over the last couple of years, this has stopped, you know, so, so we have seen something of a turnaround in, in longer term sentiment for gold. So to flip over to the dailies, you know, the gold has, has hit sort of 1360 this year. It started off around about the 1200 mark. Um, so I think that the bias is still up. And what's interesting, I think, is this correction that's been going on. So I think if you flip this over to an hourly, I mean, clearly none of this is financial advice. But, you know, the fact we've had, I mean, can we get it all in? Here we go. So we had the correction from um, up here like that. So the market came from um, 1360 traded to actually trade as 1260 so moved you know moved a hundred dollars price to go moved a hundred dollars down then we saw a half decent bounce up so, so it rallied up about 40 45 dollars but it's come back down again but it has held uh above the uh the famous line the big level and the big level for gold is, is 1260 so it's currently trading at 1274 75 so again if you think well actually i think gold's going to go up from here You've got a really logical level to place your stop under, to place it under 1260. So let's say 1250. So we're going to buy at 74.9, stop at 1250. So we've got $25 risk. If the market goes back up to here, we've got you know maybe $90 uh, upside. So I think I think it's an interesting one down here. But but the 1260 level is the big one to watch. If you lose that, then I think there's a risk will drift back into this sort of area here. But actually the stochastics, going back to our squiggles, the stochastics gave a, gave a buy signal a couple of days ago. But I think gold is an interesting one down here. So, so lots of these markets are, are, are near, you know, what are have historically been really big levels. And there's so much news coming out over the next couple of days that, you know, we could well see some of these levels tested, whether it's Euro, Pound, Euro Sterling, gold, uh, oil or whatever. So I think plenty to keep an eye on. Right. We will wrap things up there. So um, any questions, you can drop me an email, david at tradeafter.com. Uh, you can read a bit more on my website, tradeafter.com. And you can follow me on Twitter for sort of market updates and stuff uh, during the week. But I think we might have a um, quiet session this afternoon ahead of the US interest rate decision, then Bank of England tomorrow, then payrolls on Friday. So um, an interesting few days ahead. Thanks for coming along today. We'll do it all again next Wednesday, where no doubt stock markets will be 3% higher than they are today. Uh, and we'll see where everything looks like then. Okay, but thanks very much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.